Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the JavaFX series. This episode I'll be showing you how to make buttons and use buttons within JavaFX applications. So you can create buttons within your GUI and then display them and then have them do stuff and some other cool features I'll show you can do with buttons, okay? So let's just jump right into it. The first thing we want to do is create a button. And it's the same exact thing for every other control that we've made so far. All we gotta do is declare a new button object and then give it a name, okay? So we can do button, button one. Make sure you import button from JavaFX, not AWT. Um, is equal to new button. There we go. And set in. And then inside of here we can provide a name. So we can say click me. So this is just a, of course, just the t the uh, the message that will appear on the button. Okay. So now we can add that to our scene if we want to. So we can do button one here, which is actually going to add it to the V box. But then that's going to be added to the scene, so it's going to do that for us. So let's run this and see what we get. So we should get a cool little button on our GUI now. Awesome, so we get this, oh wait, we forgot to change the name of it, by the way, this would be episode 8, uh, buttons, there we go, sorry, that's very important, we have to have that there, not really, but there we go, so, let's see what we got, and there we go, so we have a button here, it says click me, it's pretty small, it looks good, you know, very simple, just a cool little button, okay, so yeah, that's how you create a button, and we can create as many as we want to, of course, and then add them to the V-Box, and the scene, and all that, and um, so we could also, you know, style it if you want to. So last episode we learned about how to do styling with CSS. So if we could do, we could set a style if you want to. So for example, if you want to change the size of the text of the button for click me, we can change it. So we could do uh, F or we could just do size, font size. So FX font size, we could do 45 pixels. And let's see what that does. Should be way bigger now. Looks probably going to look better. Okay, cool. There we go. So now it says click me. Very nice looking, very clean. So that's pretty cool, right? And we could also change the other styles if you want to, like the, you know, the color and all that fun stuff. But we can cover that in the future when we work on example projects. So let's say we change the text at some point in our program or just whenever. So we could do set text and we could say Republicans. Republicans are really cool, right? Because they are, of course, right? I mean, everyone knows that. So we can run this now. And let me show you what it looks like. So um, as you can see here, there's a dot, dot, dot. And that is whenever the text it's unable to fit within the screen or within the maximum button size so it has to just do that it has to cut it off and so that tells you the user that the there's more text to this button so if we were to expand this we could see that the the text is able to finish basically okay so if we don't want it to cut off so easily we could do something called wrapping text wrapping so that the text will wrap or move to a new line whenever there's a lot of text that cannot be displayed on one line okay so button one dot set um, set wrap text true so it's a boolean so once you set it to true, it should start wrapping. So we can restart our program here and see what happens. So now that we can see that it displays everything um, without the dot, 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 Republicans are really cool on one line, or not one line, multiple lines this time, but at least it shows all the text. We don't have to worry about expanding it by ourselves to see what it says or worrying about what it's, you know, it's hiding. But of course, if we um, make this smaller, it's still going to have the dot, 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 because it cannot do anything more. It cannot make any more lines, and it cannot, you know, I mean, it just can't do anything, right? So it has to do it sometimes. It has to force itself. So, but yeah, that's pretty simple, right? We could uh, have wrapping. That's called wrapping whenever it does that, okay? So anyway, that's pretty simple. And so um, speaking of sizing, we could also change the sizing for a button. And there's three things we could change. We could set the minimum size, the preferred size, or the max size, okay? So let's start off with the minimum size. So button one dot set min size. So that stands for minimum size. You could either change the width or the height, or you could do it both at the same time. So we'll just do both at the same time. And so for the min size, if you ever change the min size, that's going to be the minimum size that the button can be. It cannot go lower than this size ever, okay? No matter what, okay? So 50 by 50. So that means that our button cannot go smaller than 50 by 50. So let's just get rid of this here. We don't need this um, anymore, really. Um, that should be it. So let's run this and see what we get. Um, yeah. So 50 by 50, this is indeed 50 by 50, it looks like, I believe so, um, it should be, at least. Um, we can test that by also setting the preferred size if we want to, okay? So if we want to do a preferred size, that's going to be the the size that the, the program tries to give the button, okay? So if it cannot fit the preferred size for any reason, like the window's too big or too small, then it's going to resize to either fit the minimum or the maximum size, okay? So if we set a preferred size by doing pref, so set pref size, we could do um, 100 by 100. So what's going to happen here is it's going to try and size the button to 100 by 100, but if it cannot meet that requirement, um, maybe if it's too small of a window, it's going to go down to 50-50, but it cannot go, go lower than 50 by 50, as you know, because it's the minimum, right? 
So let's run this and see what we get. So as you can see here, it's way bigger now. It's 100 by 100, as you can tell, because it's bigger. So yeah, you get the point. And then also we get set a maximum size. And this is going to be, the, of course, the maximum allowed size for a button to be. So we can do set max size. I'll try and show you an example of how this might work. So 150 by 150, which is going to be a little bit bigger. That's fine. Um, let me show you here. So it's currently 150 by 100, it looks like, something like that. But yeah, y'all get the point. That's how you set the minimum, the preferred, and the max size for a button. That's just the different ways that you can size a button, okay? So you can play around with that if you want to. And by the way, if you're worried about forgetting any of this, the, what I'm showing you today, not getting enough practice, because practice is important, don't worry, because in the future we'll be working with plenty of example projects. I plan on making a calculator, maybe, um, a clock, all kinds of cool stuff that we can do, a full-size program, maybe. I want to make a lot of cool stuff because, you know, knowing JavaFX is really important. So I want to show you some really cool stuff. OK, so don't worry. That's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, we can move on to the next part, which is called a mnemonic. I believe that's how you pronounce it. But let me show you how it's spelled. So M N E N O M I C. So that's mnemonic, I guess. And that's basically just a shortcut for buttons. OK, so if you would like to see what an example of what a mnemonic is, if we go up here to this example, this um, our basically our program here, we can see that we have a menu here. And so we have file, edit, view, all these different options, right? And so we can click them if you want to, if you want to select them. But we also have these. But if we look closely, we can see that certain letters in this menu are underlined. That is because if we do Alt, if we hold down Alt and then click or type the button for whatever one is underlined, that's going to select that button on the menu, basically. So let me show you an example. So for example, if you want to select the Tools option here, we hold down Alt and then we select T. And now it's clicked, right? And then T to unselect it. Or no, it would go to this one, actually because this one's also T. So once we select this one, we could also select the next T and then so on, right? So that's a mnemonic. The underlying character is going to be the character that you can select with the shortcut, you know, by holding down Alt, right? So that's pretty cool, I guess, if you don't want to click, if you're kind of lazy like me. So yeah, so as, as you can see here, if you look at all these different options now, you can see certain different mnemonics. It's basically to make your life easier. If you don't want to have to use your mouse, you could quickly, really quick with your keyboard, select some options, okay, on the menu. So if you want to turn one of the buttons in our program into a mnemonic, we can do that. So we just need to set it to be a mnemonic. So, so we could do dot set mnemonic parsing. There we go. And then just put true just like that. And that's going to allow it to parse mnemonic. So, so there's actually one more thing we need to do real quick is set the letter for our shortcut on our button here. So we can choose any of these letters as you know. But if we want to select the C, for example, all we got to do is put a underscore in front of the C. OK, so let me show you how this works. So if you run this now, you'll see what happens. Hold on. Give it a second. So we can see that it's still a regular button. Even though we added the underscore inside of the button name, it's still going to know that we're using a mnemonic. And it's very smart, so it doesn't put the, the underscore in front of it, OK? So it's not going to ruin it, basically. OK, so now let's test it out to see if it works. So hold Alt, and then C is the one that's underlined now, as you can see. So that's the shortcut. So we press C, and now it's activated. We haven't set anything to happen whenever we click the button, so it's not going to. So we don't know if it works, basically, OK? So just to, for testing purposes, let's set it up so that whenever we click the button or use the button in any way, it um, outputs something to the console or something like that, right? So that we can test and see if it works or not. So we can do that really simply. All we got to do is do what we did last episode with the, uh, or two episodes ago with the action uh, event thing. So we could do set on action E. It's just a simple lambda expression here. And so whatever is this, whatever is inside of here will execute whenever we click the button. So we could simply say button tapped, just like that, okay? So that will be uh, run in the console, or I'll put it to the console whenever we click the button, okay? So let's try that out. So we can click this as many times as we want to. If we look in the console, we can see that it's outputting. See? So now let's try doing the mnemonic thing. So Alt, and then that underscore pops up. But then I'm still holding Alt, by the way. So now I can press C, and now it's activated. I can spam it if I want to. And since you already did it once, you can let, you can let go of Alt, and then you can keep doing it. It's already selected, so you can just keep pressing C, and you're good to go. Or you can click it, whatever you want to do. But that's how that works, OK? Just a little shortcut that you can use. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it for buttons. Actually, we have the um, we can create buttons really simply by making a new object here. We could set the sizing for a button by saying the minimum size, preferred size, and then the max size. Really, really simple. And after that, we set the mnemonic, right? Which is simply a shortcut. You know, you could use for your um, your buttons and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, that's how you do that. If you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Or you can join our Discord server. I'd rather you join our Discord server because there's like 300 people in there. And there's a big community of people that will be glad to help you if you need help, okay? 
So yeah, just join it. The link is in the description for you, so make sure you do that. And then all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description also, so make sure to check out the code. It's going to be really useful for you in the future for get, if you forget how to do anything like this. So just make sure you save that as a reference, okay? And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.